What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tutorial for you. So in this video I thought I'd quickly walk you through just a couple, creating a couple different kinds of roofs in SketchUp. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so the first kind of roof I want to talk about is probably the simplest. It's the open gable. And that's just basically a roof with kind of a slope on top of it um, that uh, has a little bit of an overhang. So that, that one's going to be really simple. You're just going to, you're going to start off and you're going to extrude your building up um, just like a rectangle. And then you're just going to draw your front face on this building. So in this case, I'm just going to draw a face like this using the line tool. I'm going to erase this out. And then I'm going to push pull that all the way to the back. So that kind of fills this in, and then eventually I'm going to erase this line, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the offset tool to offset this out to create kind of my roof overhang piece. So now what I can do is I can come in here and I can erase out this extra piece and this one as well, and then we're just going to push pull this one forward, and then we'll push pull the other side back so that it overhangs on the back just like this. And then you can just come in here and you can just erase out the extra. So really simple roof. Um, the next one we're going to talk about is a box gable, and that one's going to be a little more complicated because basically what happens with a box gable is your your uh, roof gets a little taller than the rest of your building, like it hangs out all the way around. So what we're going to do on that one is we're just going to use the offset tool to offset the top face of our building, and then once we do that, we'll do the same thing that we did with our regular open gable. We'll just draw our face up. Gonna erase out this extra. I'm gonna go ahead and reverse this face. Then we'll do the same thing where we use the offset tool to get this to overhang. And the only difference on this one is you're gonna want to either draw a line straight down or a continuation right here because otherwise if you erase this bottom line, your face is gonna go away. So you're just gonna have to kind of finish that off a little bit. And then once you do that, you can come in here and, oh, I forgot, you're going to want to push pull this backwards. And you see how when I push pull this right now, what it's doing is it's push pulling the face back instead of uh, kind of extruding it all the way along right here. All you're going to do is you're going to hit the control key for, uh, to toggle start new face mode. So that way it's going to start a new face and push it all the way back. And then I'm going to reverse this face. And then we'll do the same thing. We'll just push pull this one forward. And we'll push pull this all the way back so that it overhangs on the back side as well. So now you've got this box gable, whoops, where the entire roof kind of overhangs um, the, the footprint of your floor plan. So the next roof I'm going to talk about is a hip roof. And a hip roof is more of a roof where everything kind of, uh, it slopes up and back. So there's kind of a smaller roof line on the top here. And all you're gonna do to do that is you're just gonna come in here and you're just gonna draw a line up and you're gonna draw a line out to wherever you want this to kind of overhang. And then you're just gonna fill this in so that you have a face in here. All you have to do is click once on this face and then select the follow me tool and click on this triangle that you created and that's gonna extrude this all the way around this all the way around the perimeter of this so that uh, it's got your hip roof in here. And um, you can see how that, uh, when it does that, it kind of erased out this face in here. All you need to do is just draw that back in with the rectangle tool. But you can see how now you've got your hip roof in here just by using the follow me tool. So the next thing we're going to talk about is creating a hip and valley roof. And so a hip and valley roof is going to be a roof that um, basically when a building turns a corner, it's going to need some valleys around this corner where the roof kind of comes together. So um, what we're going to do to do this is we're going to do the same thing. And first of all, this works best if these wings are the same width, but we'll kind of go through what we can do if they're not too. But all you're going to do is you're going to do the same thing where we're going to use the follow me tool. So we're going to draw this out. So we'll draw our two lines to figure out how tall we want our roof to be. We're going to click on this face, and then we're going to activate the follow me tool in order to uh, use the follow me tool to extrude this all the way around this corner. So, and like I said, that works great when these are the same width. But if they're not the same width, like for example, if I come over here, we'll go ahead and extrude this one. So that one's nice and clean. So if we come back in here and we decide that our back face over here is going to be wider 
then or if our back side of our house is going to be wider than the front side of our house over here, then probably what we're going to do is we're going to want to find the widest part of our roof and start there. So we'll draw this out like this. You're going to select this top face and you're going to activate the follow me tool and click on this. And you can see how what that does, what that's doing here is that's coming in here and that's, uh, that's basically running this all the way around. But you can see how you get this kind of overlap. So what you're gonna to wanna to do with your overlap is you're gonna to want to select your model, you're gonna right click and you're gonna click intersect faces with model. And then you're just once, you see how once you intersected your faces with model, these extra lines start showing up. That means all these faces got intersected in here. So now, whoops, you can come in here and you can erase out all this extra stuff. So you can see how I can just come in here and I can just erase out all this extra using the erase tool. So I'm coming in here, I'm using the erase tool, I'm erasing all this out. And you, you see how your, your roof hip kind of gets a little funky in here. You may have to come in here and do some uh, cleanup of that depending on you know how this is gonna come in here. And like this might come in here a little bit differently if like let's say your building looked a little bit more like this then same thing you'd select this you would use the follow me tool and you would do that well now you can do the same thing intersect faces with model come in here and erase out all your extra you just have to be a little careful what you come in here and you erase out So that's pretty good. You're getting some weird intersections in here with the way this intersects. And part of that just has to do with the uh, way that these floor plans or the way that these wings kind of work. Because um, I think they're all kind of a little bit different thicknesses and that sort of thing. But this gives you the general idea and you can kind of work with it from there. So a gambrel roof is basically a roof that has framing that goes up and over. So it gets you more height. So what you do for that one is you'd come in here and probably what I would do actually is I'd go ahead and draw a face. Um, and then uh, draw the angle for my gambrel roof on this face, kind of like this. All right, so for the gambrel, once you've drawn kind of half of this, probably the easiest thing to do is going to be to select it and use the Move tool to make a copy of it. So click once on it, tap the M key to activate the Move key, click on this corner, and you see how if I click on this corner and move it around, it's actually deforming my box, unless I tap the Control key. You see how as soon as I tap the Control key, this created a copy. Then I'm just going to use the scale tool to flip this in place. I'm going to move it back. Then I'm going to erase this extra line. And then you're just going to do the same thing you did before with the uh, normal gable roof. You're going to push pull that back. And then uh, you're going to use the offset tool to offset it out a little bit. Then you can erase out all your extra lines. And then we'll just use the push pull. To extrude this so that now you've got your roof. Um, a mansard roof is interesting in that it kind of slopes up and then it changes slopes on the top. So in order to do this, first of all, it's wider than our roof. So we're going to start off kind of like we did with the uh, we're going to start off kind of like we did with the box gable. So we're going to um, use the offset tool to offset a piece of this. We're going to push pull it up, and you can see how what this is doing initially. First of all, is it's uh, since this is just kind of a shell it's kind of a uh, or since we were push pulling this face there's nothing in the center of it so we're gonna start off we're gonna push pull it up just a bit and then we're gonna draw a rectangle in there and we're gonna erase it out so that we have a solid roof so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off and we're gonna draw this up a little bit and then we're gonna select this top face by double clicking on it you're gonna activate the scale tool and then hold the control key and click and drag this little point in. All right, so what we're gonna do on this one is we're gonna do the same thing we did before. We're just gonna draw a line straight up. In this case, we're gonna draw a line straight to this corner. We're gonna click on this face. We're gonna activate the follow me tool. And you can see how what that did is that came in here and that extruded our top piece. And we can adjust this by selecting this line, moving it up or down and locking to the blue axis. So you can see how I can make that taller or shorter by moving that line around. So 
<laughs> to do something a little bit different, we're going to draw a hex hexagonal gazebo roof. And so what you're going to do um, to do that is you're actually going to draw a six-sided circle. So you're going to activate the circle tool. You're going to hit the enter key to tell SketchUp you want to draw a six-sided circle. So you're going to draw this in here. You're going to push pull it up. So, and you can see by default, that's uh, actually putting these sides in here with hidden geometry and hidden lines. You can either, we're just going to leave that for right now. Um, you can make those non-hidden if you want to by selecting them and coming up here and unsoftening them. Um, but that probably doesn't affect what we're doing right now. We're just going to do the same thing. This isn't really that different than what we've done before. So we're just going to draw the same kind of triangle. So we're just going to draw a little bit over to overhang. We're going to draw the triangle. We're going to activate this top face, and we're going to use the follow me tool to extrude this in a circle. And you can see how since this is a hexagonal building, basically all this does is it extrudes it along each one of these lines, so you get six faces by doing that. So, and you can come in here and you can or, or, uh, reverse all those faces so the correct face is facing outward. So, and then the last one I wanted to talk about is a Dutch gable. So the Dutch gable, you're going to create uh, kind of the same way you did the Mansard. Um, in this case, most of these at this point are kind of a combination of what we've done before. So for this one, you're going to push pull this face. You're going to use the offset tool to offset this out. You're going to push pull this face up. You're going to push it up until you get it to the height that you want. You're going to do the same thing you did before where you activate the scale tool and kind of scale this in. And then now you're going to do the same thing that you've done for the open gable, where we're just going to draw this up. You're going to erase this out. You, so for this one, this one's a little bit different in that we're actually going to push pull it in instead of out. So we're going to push pull this, or we're going to use the offset tool to offset this in, and then we're going to push pull that. So in order to do that, we're just going to use the offset tool and offset this in. And then we're going to draw a continuation of these lines, and you can just use that. Um, you can use that that uh, pink inferencing line in order to uh, make sure you're drawing that as an extension of this line. We're just going to draw this in here, and then all we're going to do is we're going to push pull this piece back out, and you can see how it's doing that thing again where it's taking that face, and. Uh, you can see how it's doing that, that thing where it takes that face and makes it hollow. And if you remember, all you gotta do is tap the control key to toggle that create new face mode and then click on this back face. So you can see how what that does is that gives you your sloping up and then your, um, your gable roof on top of that. And probably what you could do to make this look a little bit better is just push pull this back a little bit on each side. And you can see on the back side, this is hollow. That's okay. You just erase that out and then push pull it back just a little bit. So now you've got that kind of Dutch gable shape. So leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Did you like this video? Did I leave off a roof type that you would have liked to see? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new here, click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider visiting the SketchUpEssentials.com slash support to support the show. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.